Now, some of you may remember about a week ago, I made a post about this really cool collaborative project going on over at the Sawmill Creek Forum. A couple of the guys over there, uh, the two that I've been in contact with, are Jim and Dewey, uh, had this idea to create a project that would travel the country and different woodworkers would work on different parts of the project. So each woodworker would have one small job and then they'd complete that job and pass it on to the next person. So I was incredibly honored when they offered me the opportunity to slice the top off the box and then pass that on to the next person. So here's the box as it stands so far. It's got a nice drawer in the bottom and the top you can see is an empty case right now and it'll receive, I guess, a contrasting wood applied top on top of this. But what we need to do is cut what will be the frame of that top off of the box as it is now. And you can see there's really, really nice dovetails here. And this top dovetail, uh, that's actually gonna be cut. That's one of the pins from the side here. We're gonna cut that in half. And the pin itself was oversized just a little bit to allow for the material that the saw is gonna remove. Now, you could use the bandsaw to do this, but uh, getting a perfectly straight cut all the way across this surface relies on a lot of things being absolutely perfect. And that type of cut makes me a little bit nervous. So I prefer to use the table saw when I can, just using my thinnest kerf blade possible. So I've got everything set. I've got a feather board set up here, and we're gonna make a couple cuts. As we go to stabilize things, I have a little, uh, little piece of uh, quarter saw and white oak scrap here, and I'm gonna use this and you'll see as we go through, I'm gonna use this to actually uh, take up some of that gap that we create so we can continue to cut accurately after each pass. And you'll see when we get there. Now to ensure the cleanest cut possible, I'm gonna be wrapping the kerf area with some blue tape. That'll help eliminate some tear out should any occur. And for the sake of balance, I'll put a strip of tape on the other side as well. All right, let's rock and roll. Now these little shims, we'll just keep everything nice and stable for the next cut. Now, that may seem like a lot of extra precaution. Maybe some might think it's a little too much. But at this point in a project, when you're cutting a lid from a box like that, that is not the time you want to make a mistake. And especially on a project like this, um, this is not the time that I want the world to see me make a mistake. So, uh, you know, a little extra precaution is certainly called for in this case. Now, one thing you'll have to be aware of when you cut off a lid like this is that the, the lid, the frame itself, may move a little bit. We also have a situation where this box is going from one climate to another and you never quite know exactly what you're in for. Um, so honestly, the, the less time this box spends in Arizona, the better because it's so dry here. Chances are everywhere else it's going to go is going to be a lot, uh, a lot more humid than it is here. So the box looks good. We got a little bit of cleanup work to do here, a little bit of burning, but for the most part, it looks okay. Now I have to be a little bit cautious with how much work I do at this point because this is going to go to another person. There's going to be a top that's applied to this frame and that could very well tweak the frame a little bit out of position. So the more material I take off right now is the less material that's going to be there for the next person to be able to sweeten the fit. So really all I'm going to do is take some of the, the, the more prominent stuff that needs to come off. There's a little bit of burning here and I can clean that up just a hair, but I don't want to go too far because I want to let this get to its final place and then let somebody else do the uh, final sweetening once that top is attached.
And it looks like the box itself is really only going to need a nice light sanding. Just to smooth that edge out. All right, so it looks like a pretty airtight fit. I am happy with that. Now the question is, will it still be airtight and perfectly flat when it gets where it's going? Eh, I don't know. That's the fun of this whole thing, right? We'll find out. Um, but for the next person, I've marked the, the side with a nice triangle to lock down the orientation so there's no, uh, no question about which part matches up with which and that way they don't get it upside down. So that's it. Now, if you haven't read my post about this, this is actually uh, a charity-minded event. The idea is once this is all done, I believe they're going to auction off the final box uh, and, and give the money to a charity. I don't, I don't know all the details, so uh, go to the post that I'll put in the show notes for this particular episode, and uh, you'll be able to find out how you might be able to help. So um, I really like to thank all the guys at Sawmill Creek for including me in on this project. It was a lot of fun, and now i got to get to the post office. <laughs>